And then when the future men, you know, later that day come in, their sperm can't get where they need to be. So it makes it his child. Wow. <laughs> the Mercedes Benz Interview Lounge. Thanks for being on, and congratulations on season 13 starting this week. That's got to make you feel what? What do you feel? Lucky season 13. I feel lucky. I actually, when I, I remember the, the day Oprah uh, came into my dressing room, I was doing her show at the time, and she said, I think we should do a show together. I said, we are doing a show together. She says, no, no, no. A show together called The Dr. Oz Show. And I sort of had this weird rush thinking that, man, I never planned on that. It never was on my vision board. Um, and it was sort of a bizarre experience just to, to think about it ever happening. And, you know, health shows, you know, the old adage was you could never talk to some, to an audience, a broad audience like yours right now about health for more than 60 seconds because they get bored. And the reason for that is when you do it on the news, it often is tedious. You know, new study shows that something you don't care about never will happen if you take this pill. <laughs> and so we said we need to completely disrupt that. And then if you remember, this is back in, you know, 2008, eight nine. President Obama just gotten elected. The country was really feeling up. Uh, and people thought, well, the one thing we don't control is our health. We need to get going on that. And there was an incredible surge towards uh, do, you know, health moves. P people couldn't spell quinoa. Now they can. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Greek, that's Greek, an, Greek that's yogurt. An important, Greek that's yogurt. an important thing you've done. You've taught us more about <laughs> <right>. quinoa. <laughs> For the spelling bees. No, I'll tell you one good example. Seriously, uh, you, Greek yogurt was 1% of all the yogurt consumed in America. Now it's more than 50%. Oh, wow. And a lot of that was because people began to realize they could use some foods like Greek yogurt over other foods like you know full cream um, and get similar tastes and still enjoy their lives. And that was the big benefit of you know, the first 13 years of my show is making it easy for people to do the right thing. But we're in a different era now and you guys are witnessing it and I, you know just, just lamenting over the fact we haven't been together as much over the last two years. <laughs> the country is anxious, which we're gonna talk about today a little bit. I think it's a time for us to reset and reconnect. There are realities of what we are going to be dealing with. Most of them, by the way, uh, uh, have pretty good outcomes. I don't think this, you know, human species is at risk. Uh, the biggest problems we have, we often create for ourselves. And I think if we are thoughtful about the process, this will be a much more optimistic year than last year. And it'll open up a decade. Because, you know, after the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic 100 years ago, uh, there, there was a, it exploded with the 20s. I mean, the world changed dramatically because the virus forced people to change their norms. And one thing COVID has done is accelerated our world, or at least accelerated the change happening in the world. So now people can see it better, so they'll make wiser decisions. Wow, that's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought of it that way, but I love how you, you framed that. Look, l let's celebrate uh, this 13th season by talking about what you're doing this week. I know mean, you guys are going to have some great shows this week. I know uh, Howie's going to be on to talk about anxiety. And this is something we are, we're all swimming in every day. And something I know our listeners talk to us about all the time, Dr. Oz, is being anxious all the time. Different levels of anxiety are affecting all of us every single day. Well, Howie's very proud now. He says, finally, the rest of the world caught up with me. Now you're all OCD. <laughs> <laughs> you're all, wow. You're all wearing masks. You got you got gloves on like I do. You know, he says, I thought I was weird for a while. Now but we I, all are. We I, all are feeling anxious, you know, and and so we got to deal with this. How do you deal with it? How do you deal with it when you feel anxious, Doctor Oz? Well, the, the first reality is anxiety is normal. It's, it's, it, if you don't have anxiety, something's wrong with you. So when you get up in the morning and it's dark outside and you start worrying about something that's going to happen during the day, when you perseverate over something late at night that uh, you can't fix. Uh, and you gotta develop tactics to deal with it. Otherwise you will have anxiety continually. Anxiety is like a fire alarm. And by the way, women will have more anxiety naturally than men because the connection between the anxiety center of the brain called the amygdala and the cortex, which is the, where we process our information, there are a lot more neuro neurologic connections in women than in men, probably 10 times more. Uh -huh. So women are supposed to worry more about their kids, about their spouse, about the world around them. Do they have enough food, do, you know, safety? All those things are louder in a woman's brain. Huh. But men have anxiety too. They just express it differently uh, in ways that are less productive. <laughs> right, I know. Alex, you know how he handles anxiety. He just farts a lot. Oh, <laughs> okay, whatever works. He just farts it right out. I'm like, how are you feeling today? I'm, I'm feeling great. <laughs> it's weird. We all express it different ways. Uh, okay, so I, I, there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about. The Health uh, yes. Health Core Gala tonight, hosted by Dr. Oz and Lisa, of course, every year. You're getting together at, uh, at uh, Central Park Zoo. What a great place for a party. Well, we wanted to be outdoors. Uh, we thought people would be more comfortable, especially with COVID. This, by the way, we had no idea where we'd be because we, you know, we schedule these things six months ahead of time. But uh, Central Park Zoo is a great venue. Uh, Health Corps is going to touch the lives of 250,000 children this year. 
And you know, you've been an honoree Elvis. I appreciate all your support during the years. We've raised $80 million wow. to go into high schools wow, around nice. the country and change the lives of uh, those kids by dealing, for example, with the anxiety you mentioned earlier, because they don't have the skills to do that. But what kids need more than anything else is mentoring, right? They need coaches and music teachers and people hang with them. And uh, the, the Peace Corps, think about that organization, you take college grads, who are energetic and put them in co- countries around the world to you know, build dams in Botswana. We take the same college grads, we put them in schools around America. And it, it's a national program, but it started right here in New York City uh, under Mike Bloomberg. And uh, Eric Adams, who's on the show this week as well, who's a great guy, has been a big supporter of Health Corps for our entire history. He's the, he was the borough chief, still is of Brooklyn, but he'll, he'll, be, he'll be the next mayor. Mm-hmm. And he's coming, he's coming this evening as well. And his passion, I don't know if people know about this history of his, but he talks about it very openly on the show today. He woke up one morning, he was blind, couldn't feel his feet. His diabetes was out of control. Remember, he grew up with a lot of anxiety because he'd been beaten up by cops. He became a cop. He dealt with all the headaches of trying to rise up through the ranks as an African-American, became a captain of the police force. But here he is as a diabetic, unable to control his own health, and he changed overnight. He lost 30 pounds, his diabetes went away, his eyesight came back, his legs don't don't tingle anymore because the diabetes destroys the nerves. And he's a walking, talking poster child for owning your future, owning your destiny. And the best antidote to anxiety is to have control over the world around you. And you can't control everything, but you have a fighting chance to control everything. Mm-hmm. And that is always what humans have done when they felt anxious. You know, go plant some more crops, make more babies, find, find the person of your life that you need to have as a life partner or whatever it takes to get you where you need to be. Wow, Dr. Oz. Also this week, uh, we need to know more about the booster now. We're rolling into... The questions of it, when should I get the booster? Should I get the booster? I mean, where where are you uh, where are you seeing that now for us? All right, let's get into this controversy a little bit. So I've got the world's experts on this topic coming on the show. They have Peter Hotez, who's the big virus guy at uh, Texas, who's developing his own vaccine. Uh, there, uh, 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 there's a, the, the dean of one of the biggest public health schools up in New England. Uh, I've got the Surgeon General coming on uh, this week, next week on Monday as well. And here's the big story. We've got to make a decision as a nation. Is our goal to extinguish COVID, like get rid of it, or is it to tame the virus? I think most experts believe it's the latter. It's taming the virus. Why do we think that? Because the virus, you know, is in 14 species besides humans. Uh, We vaccinated about 37% of the 8 billion humans on the planet. So we're not even close to extinguishing it. And that's okay. We don't have to extinguish it because we can tame this virus and we can live the lives you want to live. I don't want people waiting on hold for another year before they go to New Mexico and have a big party. Uh, you know, it's going to take an effort altogether, but we can make it happen. So Hotez argues, he's the guy from Texas. He says, and he's, little, he's tough on this. He says, we have been misled about vaccines. It was never going to be two, two shots. Because normally, think about childhood vaccines. Think about the hepatitis vaccine. Yep. You give two shots, and then about six months later, you give the third shot. Why? The first two shots build up your awareness of the virus. The third shot, the third booster, gives you long lasting protection, the the durability that we desire. So he says, we got everyone thinking that two shots was enough when it was unlikely to have been enough. You must get the third booster when it's approved uh, and widely available. And when you get the third booster, you get a three times increase in your antibody levels. He doesn't think there's any hurry though. And the reason for that is because uh, the CDC should take its time, approve it when it's appropriate. But right now, if you've been vaccinated, you've got one tenth the mortality, 10% of the mortality uh, of people who have not been vaccinated. So basically for healthy people, that's about the same mortality as being in a car accident and dying. So don't panic, don't worry, live your life normally. When the time is right, you'll be offered a booster, probably wise to get it. Also this week, hmm. Dr. Oz's 13th anniversary, kicking off with the uh, Spermapalooza guy. <laughs> <laughs> you, have you heard this guy's story? I mean, this, this guy's story is amazing. You, you would love this guy. I'm going to bring him over to your house, Elvis. You'll, you'll get really no, good no, no, no. <laughs> don't, Why is that? Don't bring him over here. Yeah. No, no. i got to put drains in the so, floors if he comes here. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, I mean, he has he has more kids than anyone else on earth. Is this true? So he's yeah, he's got, he's got 100 kids. And the reason he's Whoa. called Palooza is a lot of women can't afford the infertility workup, the, they can't buy, they can't get the sperm. He gives the sperm to whoever wants it. So he'll literally go to Grand Central Station, you go to the bathroom, he'll, he'll, he'll deposit it personally too, if you want it, by the way. But what? he'll usually God. put it in a cup. 
<laughs> That's happened. I interviewed one of those women on the show uh, this week as well. But <laughs> some women prefer it that way. It's you know, it's a high quality, directly placed where it needs to be. Right. Um, okay. but, but he's a pre he's a professor of mathematics, by the way, at City College. So this guy, good, you know, handsome, tall, good looking guy, smart, obviously. He gives the sperm to the women. Uh, they, it, he puts in a little a little de uh, device they can they can squirt it into themselves. He's very successful in getting babies. And then he actually, if they want to play a role, uh, if they want him involved, he'll play a role. If, he'll give them a little support if they need it. He's been sued for parental support by five of the hundred women. What? Uh, but this week he'll have his hundredth child. Uh, and if, you know, but would you do that, Elvis? Would you donate your sperm at, at will? <laughs> This way, uh, this generous man is. I, I I've tried, and no one... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I, I was asked by uh, some friends, and I did, and it unfortunately did not work out the way they wanted it to work out. But no, absolutely. But if if, if I have an intimate relationship, a friendship with someone, and we talk it over, I don't know if I could just like give it to strangers. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Who, who who on the two on the call who on the uh, the the show right now would donate their sperm? Scary. Gandhi. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I actually Gandhi's had a friend in. ask me if I would donate eggs to him, and I was like, no, sorry, that, that yeah. I, I it would be my kid. It would feel strange to me. Yeah. So. I get that. Yeah. Probably I can't give mine to the person I'm with. I can't imagine <laughs> donating to anybody. <laughs> she doesn't even want it. <laughs> How do you know if you're sperm worthy? Like, is there like a specific kind of person that you can look at and be like, this person's a good candidate and that one's not? You know, the most common selection criteria is what the person looks like. It's oh, amazing. Wow. It's, really? like, I'm out. it's like it's like Tinder. You they swipe through, swipe through, swipe through. I'll take Froggy. Oh. And then they, then you, they, they can. They, then we look at a petri dish. And you see little sperm swimming around and the percentage that are swimming, you know, not all the sperm fertilize. So I don't know if you know this, but 10% of the sperm are fast swimmers. They race to the egg. The other 90% play defense. They get in there and they block the ability of the sperm to get through the cervix to get up to where the egg might be. So really? this is one of the reasons that huh. that uh, anthropologists know that, that men and women were not monogamous. Because if you're monogamous, you don't have to have blocking sperm because who are you blocking? The reason that you have blocking sperm is because the male human from you know, hundred thousand years ago knew his woman might be with some other man. So the, if he's first, he gets his fast swimmers up the up up into the portal, gets his defense players in spot, and then when the future men you know later that day come in, their sperm can't get where they need to be. So it makes it his child. Wow, yeah, this is incredible. That's crazy. Why well, my God, so complicated? All the politics going on in my in my area. <laughs> Look, you know what? This is why we love you, Dr. Oz, because you're always fascinating. You're always upbeat and fun, and you you make learning about health and our bodies fun. And this is why you're on to season 13. This is the week. Make sure you support Dr. Oz. We love you so much, and we miss you. I can't wait to dance with you at, at my next wedding. Come on. <laughs> Tomorrow. I, I, well, that's that's why we're going out tonight. <laughs> we party it up. But can I do one plea to everyone listening now? Because you guys have yes. a huge audience. Oh, absolutely. It is the right time to just take a step back, reset. The things that you're worried about that you have anxiety over were supposed to happen. You're supposed to deal with those, those new realities, whether you're in a job you don't want to be in or you should be in a job and you're not going to one. You've got to reset and reconnect. What we need more than anything else is a safety net of humanity. And when I look around and see people who are the most out, the most concerned is because they've lost those those connections. What makes you guys work is because you still connect. You can do it digitally, you can do it in person, but it has to happen uh, because the, the antidote to the pathology of depression and anxiety is each other. Wow. Wow. That's always been your message, by the way. Loneliness yep. is loneliness is as dangerous as disease, right? Yep. So, I mean, take care of yourself and make sure others are there to listen and listen to others if they have something to say, right? I was. I tell you, we're going to have more people. We'll lose more people from deaths of despair than from actual COVID. That's how. That's how serious this is. And the numbers are sort of stunning. There was a RAND report. Uh, if they, they ask people who are more progressive liberals because they, they read different media than people who are conservative, they ask them what the chance of them ending up in the hospital if they had COVID was, and half the people said fifty percent. The real number is about three percent. So, be careful where you're getting your information from. Challenge. Uh, you know, they, they, they inf there's stuff that's scaring you because a lot of times it's made to look much worse than it really is. But if you reconnect with people, they'll tell you. Your friends will tell you the truth about the risk you have and the, and the opportunities that are out there for you. Because the world is going to be very bright for the next couple of years. You know, it, that I'm sure of no matter how we manage COVID because we will manage it. 
Wow. Love, love that message. Thank you, Dr. Oz, and happy 13th uh, anniversary or 13th season for you and everyone. God bless show. you all. Tell Donate Lisa sperm. About, go ahead and breakfast with your <laughs> you know, go ahead and breakfast with uh, Lisa. And talk talk about what we we're talking about here and enjoy your breakfast. Make sure you No, I'm gonna go to donate sperm. We have another interview in 40 minutes. You better hurry. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Dr. Oz. I'll talk to you soon. I love okay? you guys. All right. We're gonna take, take a break. We'll be back after this. The Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge.